Hello everybody, on this video I'm going to show you the 10 most common mistakes that I see people do when recording with the scope cam and also how to fix them. Let's jump into issue number one, floating reticle. Have you ever seen a dancing reticle like this? The reason the reticle seems to float is because image stabilization is enabled on your camera. This is a very common problem especially when recording with a phone, because on some phones there's no way to turn this setting off and I know it might seem counterintuitive but to fix this you just have to turn the image stabilization off after turning image stabilization off the reticle will stop floating as you can see on this example another common question I get is why the image is mirror and how can I fix this if you are using a scope cam system that has an internal prism then the camera will be recording the image that is reflected in the mirror and for this reason the image is coming out of the camera mirror in order to fix this issue you will need a video editing software personally i'm using davinci resolve it's a very powerful video editing software that you can get for free let's jump into resolve and see how you can fix this very simple issue and no worries i know it looks like very intimidating many options but we are just going to focus on one thing at a time so grab your file and drop it in the timeline this is the file that comes directly out of the camera you can see here the numbers are mirrored select the clip on the timeline make sure you have this red selection on the clip and these uh, options will appear on the right side here you will see flip click flip and there you go this will fix the number now they are not going to be mirrored this is a very simple fix that i think everyone should do because it takes no time and makes your video looks the way you like it. Shaky video. There won't be anything more annoying than watching a video with the images moving side to side, up and down. This can be so annoying that you can end it up with motion sickness. Let me show you quickly this clip, the way they came out of the camera and then I will fix it and show the end result. Now, let's go ahead and fix this. So here we can see the video and it's pretty shaky. The solution for this type of problem is to adjust the speed. So you need to make it slow. You need to slow down this footage so it doesn't shake too much. So if you go really fast, you see it's gonna move. So how I do it, I just uh, locate the moment where the shots happen, like here, at this point. I can see the pellet, it's gonna be hitting here. And I just right click I select Retime Control. So now I can modify the, the speed. And what I do is just add a speed point. And then this will split the clip in two segments. Here you see I'm 100%, 100%. So what I do is I just move a few frames back here. And then I will do another speed point. And in this small segment here I will slow down I would say like 10% now when you look at this you can see the shot happening right that part is a little bit better maybe I will just increase a little bit more up to there then uh, here I will reduce the speed after the shot like 50% so now let's see what we got so far yeah it's not moving now we need to deal with this part here we still pretty shaky as you can see like pretty shaky here so what I do there it's like I'm not gonna show all of this on the video because it's pretty bad probably would show mm, around here so let me add another speed point and this one I will reduce the speed let's say 75% now let's see the difference this is 100% 75% 10% 50% <laughs> look at the difference this is how it looks very shaky now still shaky here this 75 didn't help much let me put it 50 Let's look at the different here. Way better. Uh, 
and this is probably how I leave this video. Let's watch it one more time. When all is done, this is how it looks. When you got your scope, one of the first thing you did was to adjust the diopter so the reticle was clear to your eyes. The bad news is that when you are using a scope cam, you need to think as if the camera is a different shooter with a different vision than yours. So it is possible that even when you see a clear reticle, the camera will get it out of focus. Please keep this in mind. Your goal is to have a focused reticle in video, but also you should be able to see the reticle when you are shooting. There is a balance that needs to be achieved so the camera and you can see a clear reticle. An external monitor is going to be very handy for this adjustment. I highly recommend one because you can have a quick feedback. The screen on the camera is not going to provide enough resolution for you to see what's happening. The way I do this is to start increasing the diopter value and checking how this modification impacts both the camera and me when I look on the scope. I keep doing this until I feel I have a good focus on the camera but I still see clearly the reticle while shooting. Blurry image can be one of the most difficult issues to master. It can happen for multiple reasons and sometimes it's impossible to avoid. For example, if the scope doesn't focus at close range and you are aiming at something that is close, there is a big chance the image will be out of focus. The other reason this could be very difficult is because it's a scope specific. Some scopes have a more sensitive parallax than other. If you miss the focus just by a hair, you will end up with a blur image. Now, let me share with you the way that I do in order to get the image in focus. First, that external monitor is very important because I will be practicing focus on my scope until I'm confident I know what is happening on the camera by just looking through the scope. First, while looking through the scope, I make sure the image is perfectly focused. Then I check the external monitor and 9 out of 10, the image on the camera is going to be out of focus. So I do micro adjustments on the parallax. Sometimes I need to move the parallax forward just a little bit and in some scopes I just need to move the parallax backward. I do these micro adjustments while checking the external monitor and when I see the image is crystal clear I look again through the scope and see if the image is still in focus or not. Then while looking through the scope I try to reproduce what I just did while looking at the monitor and have a sense of what's happening while I do this micro adjustment. I keep repeating this until I know how much I need to turn the scope passing the perfect focus point. Practice makes the master. Shadows can appear for two main reasons. If the scope cam is not aligned, you will get shadows. On the RAM cam, I have designed this piece that will make sure your system is centered with the scope. The side shot won't have this piece, so you will have to manually center. That's not an issue with this Orion cam, because as you can see, this piece here will go over the eyepiece, and there won't be any movement. I'm making sure the whole system is centered. Other reason you might get shadows is because the magnification on the scope is all the way to maximum and this issue you may even notice happening without the scope cam some people say the scope is not clear all the way again this is not happening on every scope so my recommendation if is you don't have a really high-end scope probably don't go all the way to maximum like back it up like for example here on this scope this Athlon it's very clear I like it for my compact setup it's focused to 10 yard really like it but if I go all the way to 20 something weird happened on the image I see like a milky haze that I don't like and so in this scenario it's not a shadow it's not a shade but I lose clarity when I go all the way to 20 so one pro tip is check if your scope is clear all the way but if not just back it up a little bit and you would be just fine a small field of view is another common issue the reason for this be the focal length of your camera. 
and arrow length will get less information from left to right and a wider length will capture more information giving this effect. You can fix this using two methods modifying your camera settings or using your video editing software. If your camera allows to modify the field of view you can use a setting where the image doesn't need modification out of the camera. But now let's jump into Resolve to see how you can fix this issue using your video editing software. Let's grab our video or clip out of the camera and here we can see the small field of view. I'm gonna flip the numbers really quick. Um, the way I do this is to increase the zoom on the image until I can fill most of the, the screen. So zoom will increase that. This position X, position Y will allow you to adjust the image left and right. I really like the way this looks rather than having a video that looks something like this. I think it's very distracting all this black space here. So that's why I do it this way. Canter reticle is one of the issues I dislike the most. The reason you will have a canter reticle is that your scope cam is not level. I will show you three ways to fix this. When I built the Orion cam, I had this in mind. So you will have a flat surface where you can use a level and get this done quickly. If your scope cam system doesn't have a way to use a level, you can use the external monitor for assistance. On the monitor, I enable the grid I use the line as a guide so I can make the reticle parallel to the grid lines. If you don't have a way to do the last two steps, then you will need to fix this in post. So let's jump into Resolve and see how to fix this there. In Resolve, we just grab our clip, put it in the timeline, so we do the flip. But now we have this uh, image is canted, right? So an easy way to do to fix this is to find a something called adjustment clip so here I can search for it okay. and here we have the adjustment clip so you will see what we are gonna do right now so I put the adjustment clip on top of my clip and then here I will search for grid so basically it's gonna be on side the uh, open effects. So you see I can put the grid on top of the adjustment clip. So what we have done is like anything that that the adjustment clip is over, you will have this grid on top. You see? Here no grid, here grid. So I'm not I'm not changing the image whatsoever. That's why this is called an adjustment clip. I can apply effects to this adjustment. Um, well here we had a grid let me go here into this effect tab here and uh, here you can see you can control the number of cells so here I just make one actually it's gonna be a two two cell by two cell and I will make these lines a little bit thinner I don't need this to be so thick so I would just by I doing this. Well, what I have done here is I've created a basically a virtual reticle and I can use this to align my actual reticle. So let's go back to the clip. So I'm clicking here and now I can rotate my clip until so here I'm using the, the, the line to make it but I also can use this now to center this more than leveling you see the reticle is moved to the to the left so let's move it to the right as I say position allows me to move this to the right um, so what's happening here because it was film canted you will get this portion of the image cut out so how to fix this you need to zoom zoom and here you can do final adjustment let's move it and then when you're done you can delete your adjustment clip or you can just put it aside just to use in the next clip but uh, this is the end result this is how I align the reticle in post 
Light reflections can be really annoying. The intensity of the reflection can be so big that you will lose completely the video you are recording, as you can see in this example. All you can see is a fence. To fix this, just make sure you are blocking all the light entering into the back of the scope cam system. The silicon eye cup was designed for this. If your scope cam don't have this, like the Tactacam, just use a shirt over your head or a cap can also help. Do you know how many glasses you will need to clean when using a scope cam? And when was the last time you cleaned all of them? Let me tell you, when using a scope cam, you will need to clean five glasses. The camera lens, the scope front objective lens, the scope eyepiece glass, the front side of the scope cam glass, and the back side of the scope cam glass. The first step is to blow air into the glass before cleaning. This will remove any big particle, like sand or other hard stuff that could scratch the glass. Then I simply use eyeglass cleaner and with the soft rag, give it a gentle wipe. And that's all that I have for today. If there is something that I didn't mention that you've been struggling while using a scope cam, please leave me a comment below and I will try to address it. So I will reply with an answer or maybe even I do a video about it. If you like this video, please subscribe because I will be coming with more tutorials on how I do stuff and I think it will be very interesting for you to watch. All right, see you on the next. Bye.